सक्सेसफुल वॉरियर इज द एवरेज मैन विद लेजर लाइक फोकस नमस्कार एवरी वन हैपी न्यू ईयर मे द न्यू ईयर ब्रिंग यू हैपीनेस पीस एंड प्रोस्पेरिटी विशिंग यू अ जॉयस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री तो फ्रेंड्स टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मेजर स्पीशीज जो रिसेंटली न्यूज में थी एंड दे आर ऑल्सो रेलिवेंट फॉर यूपीएससी सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम लेट स्टार्ट टूडे इज डिस्कशन विद एम्पर पैंगविंस एज पर द रिसेंट स्टडी द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ अप टू नाइनटी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ लैंड बेस एंड टार्कटिक स्पीशीज इंक्लूडिंग एम्पर पैंगविंस को डिक्लाइन बाई ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट हंड्रेड देयर फोर ग्रेटर कंजर्वेशन एफर्ट्स आर नीडेड टू प्रोटेक्ट एंड टार्कटिक इको सिस्टम एंड लिमिटिंग ग्लोबल वार्मिंग इज द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव वे टू सिक्योर दियर फ्यूचर राइट नाउ लेट्स लर्न अबाउट एम्पर पैंगविंस दे आर द लार्जेस्ट ऑफ ऑल द पैंगविन स्पीशीज एंड दे आर एंडमिक टू एंटार्कटिका and emperor penguin is listed as near threatened in the iucn red list this is the image of emperor penguin and now let's learn about humboldt penguin they belong to a genus that is commonly known as banded group and they are endemic to the pacific coast of chile and peru and they are named after humboldt current because their habitat is located near the humboldt current and they have large bear skin patches around their eyes and they are classified as vulnerable species by iucn right this is the image of penguins they are a group of aquatic flightless birds they primarily live in southern hemisphere with only one species galapagos penguin found north of the equator and every year 25th april is observed as world penguin day right now let's learn about negleria fowleri recently south korea reported its first case of infection from negleria fowleri or brain eating amoeba now let's learn about negleria fowleri it is an amoeba which is a single cell living organism that lives in soil and warm fresh waters such as lakes rivers and hot springs and it is commonly called the brain eating amoeba because it can cause a brain infection when water containing the amoeba goes up the nose right it was first discovered in australia in 1965 So far Negleria fowleri has been found in all continents and declared as the cause of primary amoebic meningoencephalitis which is a brain infection in over 16 countries including India and this point we have already discussed now let's talk about the treatment as the Negleria fowleri infection is rare and progresses quickly scientists have not been able to identify any effective treatments yet at present doctors treat it with a combination of drugs including amphotericin b azithromycin fluconazole rifampin miltefosin and dexamethasone right as you can see in the image infection typically occurs when contaminated water enters the nose often when people participate in water activities such as swimming diving or water sports now let's learn about bar headed goose recently bar headed goose which is considered one of the world's highest flying birds visited the muttukadu backwaters here i have a question for you you have to write the location of muttukadu backwaters in the comment section below right this is the image of bar headed goose now let's learn more about bar headed goose its scientific name is anser indicus and according to iucn the conservation status of bar headed goose is least concern and this pale gray bird is distinct from other geese in its genus because of the black bars on its heads as you can see here in the image and bar headed goose is found in central china and mongolia and they breed there and they are capable of flying through the passes of highest mountains and they start the migration to the indian subcontinent during the winter and stay here till the end of the season and they come to india and return to their homes by crossing himalayan ranges and do you know friends they are one of the birds which can fly even at a very high altitude and the capacity of bar headed geese to transport and consume oxygen at a high rates in hypoxia distinguishes this species from similar lowland waterfowl right and these geese have higher myoglobin concentration at the onset of migration and also slightly modified hemoglobin structure which increases the oxygen binding capacity in them as compared to other migratory birds and this helps them withstand a lower supply of oxygen and do you know friends bar headed geese are herbivores and they mainly feed on grasses that surround lakes where they nest and they are vibrant species capable of electrifying the water bodies they are found in and the main threats to bar headed geese include habitat loss over hunting and egg collection etc right now let's learn about polar bear 
polar bears in Canada's western Hudson Bay, which is an inland sea connected to the Arctic Ocean, are dying at an alarming pace due to climate change. And according to the researchers, western Hudson Bay has witnessed a drop of around 50% in the population of polar bears since 1980s because ice is essential to the survival of polar bears is disappearing, right? This is the image of polar bear. Now let's learn more about polar bears. They are hyper carnivorous species which means animals with over 70% meat diet and their native range lies largely within the arctic circle. They are the largest extant bear species as well as largest extant land carnivore and do you know friends, they are one of the most significant predators in the arctic region and they keep biological population in balance, the big kills made by them serve as a food resource for scavengers like arctic foxes and arctic birds, right? An arctic sea ice is crucial to polar bear survival as they use it not only to hunt seals which is their chief food but also for traveling, mating and resting, right? Now in the last friends, let's know about Arakanet. It was in the news because recently a Lok Sabha member urged the union government to levy hefty import duty on Arakanet to check falling prices in the domestic market. This is the image of Arakanet. Now let's know more about Arakanet. It is usually referred to as Areca palm but has also been called yellow palm, butterfly palm, yellow butterfly palm, cane palm and golden feather palm. And do you know friends, it is the source of common chewing net popularly known as beetle net or supari. And India is the largest producer of Arakanet and at the same time largest consumer also. And major states cultivating Arakanet are Karnataka, Kerala, Assam, Tamil Nadu, Meghalaya and West Bengal. Now let's look at the origin of Arakanet. It was originated in Madagascar and it is widely grown outdoors in the tropics, right? And let's look at the growing conditions of Arakanet. Its cultivation is mostly confined to 28 degree north and south of the equator and it grows well within the temperature range of 14 degree Celsius and 36 degree Celsius and it is adversely affected by temperatures below 10 degree Celsius and above 40 degree Celsius. An ideal rainfall required for the cultivation of Arakanet is 750 mm to 4500 mm irrigation, right? And do you know friends, largest area under the crop is found in gravely laterite soils of red clay type and it can also be grown on fertile clay loam soils. And one more thing friends, sticky clay, sandy, alluvial, brackish and calcareous soils are not suitable for Arakanet cultivation, right? So with this, let's conclude our today's discussion. Thanks for listening and once again friends, sending you warmest wishes for the wonderful new year.